Not many books actually change a person's life, but this book changed mine. Gaia, A New Look at Life on Earth, was published in 1979. Its author, James Lovelock, rattled the scientific world and electrified the rest of us by arguing that the Earth behaves like a single living organism that creates and maintains a viable environment for life. I'm one of the elephants in the room in this whole discussion of, of our impact on the, um, uh, on the, on the climate and, and Gaia generally is this huge population that we have. And you, yes. you, you mentioned this a number of times, but it seems to me that, that uh, it, well, is it possible to, to really address these problems without a huge die-off on the human population? Which I may be so. engineering at the moment. But I don't possible? think so. Mm. I, I mean, in theory, uh, if you had a wonderfully liberal world with all of the objectives of the United Nations fulfilled completely, everything, you know, mm. uh, humanist and Christian and good, uh, yeah, maybe we could solve it. But we don't. We're a tribal animal. We're going to go on fighting, because uh, that's our evolutionary history. I once asked a very senior biologist, John Maynard Smith, who was an enormous opponent of Gaia, in so much so he referred to it as an evil religion, not a science at all. Um, and <laughs> anyway, he came right round in the end, it won, won him right round. He never went public, unfortunately, before he died. but. Uh, I asked him, I said, what do you suppose would happen if the genetic engineers found the tribal gene and then uh, uh, got rid of it for people? Would it make us any better or worse? And he pondered quite a bit, and he said, <laughs> it's quite a question. And he said, oh no, he said, uh, don't even think about it. He said, there, there is no tribal gene. It's, it'll be a whole system of distributed genes and there will be no way of taking them all out without it affecting so many other things as well, it probably wouldn't be viable. Um, and that was, that was a really good geneticist kind of response, and I think it's probably correct. So we, we're doomed, as we are, to be tribal animals. It'll take a lot more evolution before we solve that one and become social animals like bees and, and ants and things. And even then, we'll probably still be tribal in a different sort of way. Mm -hmm. But that's why, for you, it's important for human beings to survive this crisis, which may be inevitable. Well, um, I think it's important for Gaia. You see, I look on human beings as an important and evolutionary step in the history of the planet, as with the pho photosynthesizers. Like the photosynthesizers, we cause a frightful mess and mayhem all around when we first appear. So did they. Uh, but gradually things adapt, uh, up, both us and them, and you finish up with photosynthesizers of giant redwood trees and admired by everybody mm -hmm. and producing the oxygen you can drive your cars with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, nothing but a benefit. Um, and our intelligence, if it could be integrated as part of the whole planetary system, uh, just as oxygen's been integrated into part of the planetary system, would gives our planet, make it the first intelligent planet in the galaxy, perhaps. And that would be a, what a wonderful future for humans. The Green Interview is co-produced and directed by Chris Beckett, with the generous cooperation of Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.